Our next speaker is someone I've gotten to know personally. Uh, she's a very sweet girl, very smart, incredibly smart, actually, off the charts smart. She's done some amazing things for the community. And Francis, I've also heard you know Ernestine Fu as well. I've had the absolute honor of getting to know her for the past uh, couple years, and she's been nothing but just amazing to work with, uh, to get to know. She is super inspiring. I cannot wait to have her on stage with me here today. Perfect. I can't wait, too. So we are in for a treat. Let's bring up Ernestine Fu. Hi, Ernestine. How are Hi. you? Good to see you again. Yeah. So, all right. So for those of you who don't know, this is Ernestine Fu. And Ernestine, now, have you ever heard of a magazine called Forbes? No, I haven't. No? So who are some people that might be on the cover of Forbes in the past? I'm thinking there might be some people like... Francis uh, Kong. Um, <laughs> in a different universe in my dreams. Richard Branson might have been there. Jessica Alba, I heard, was there. So was Elon Musk and Jack Ma, Oprah, Bill Gates. Do you recognize who this person is here? Um, yeah, I guess so. I think... My uh, childhood photo. Yeah, it's your childhood. <laughs> How old were you when you made the cover of Forbes magazine? Um, I was 20. What? A couple of decades ago. So. Yeah, a couple yeah. of decades. 20. <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite sure what I was doing when I was 20, but I was definitely not making the cover of any magazines. <laughs> so, what happened? How did you make the cover of an internationally powerhouse magazine while you're still in college? Um, to be honest, I was pretty surprised since it was one of the first interviews I ever done with any publication and they um, did this in-depth interview in which they were interviewing myself, they were interviewing my professors, my colleagues, um, partners at the venture capital firm and that, just a number, even my high school teachers as well and then um, they also ended up doing a photo shoot but I was in the middle of finals um, so I had no idea what was going on and a couple months later I walked through the, through the airport and um, were you wearing the, that while you're taking your finals and then they just took a picture and then made the I was actually, which is why like, um, so the funny thing is in that photo I was wearing um, just what college students usually wear, which is like sweatpants, like tank top, and just a plaid uh, shirt over on top, which is why I think they had to cut it, you know. Like, <laughs> like Jessica Alba looks great because she's professionally in business wear, or like Richard Branson, but... I was in sweatpants, so. You apparently don't need to be touched up. You're already naturally beautiful. That's awesome, that's beautiful. Now, when you were doing this, were you picked to the interview because of a project you worked on or because of a class or uh, because it was an introduction? How did, how did they pick to interview you? Um, so basically, I started working at a venture capital firm based in San Francisco called El Sopoli Partners, where I'm at right now, and um, was working on my first financing deal just within a few weeks of joining the firm and ended up closing that deal and then Forbes was like, oh, this is really incredible that um, you're able to, one, get into a venture capital firm at an early age, but two, also um, close a deal so early on. So you were 19 when you did your first financing deal? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No need for the dramatic pauses. You're like <laughs> I can't help this. I'm trying to think when I was doing 19, it definitely, I, was, I don't think I've even uh, bounced my own checkbook. So that's amazing. Now, from that point and onward, you've actually accomplished a lot of amazing things as well, too. Um, what are some of the things that you do? What the, I guess here's a good question. Walk us through, if there's such a thing, a typical day in your life now. Um, sure. So I would say that um, every day is different, but there is probably a couple things that are fixed within my calendar. So. For instance, every single Monday, there's partner meetings that we have at the Venture Capital Fund. So mm -hmm. this is where we go through new investments, uh, potential investments, also go through the existing portfolio, um, go through like um, fund financials, all that kind of stuff. So that's at least fixed on my schedule every single Monday. And then every single month, um, board meetings are also fixed on my calendar. And then outside of that, every single day is different in terms of I could be talking to founders, I could be... Um, talking to um, folks at large companies who are looking at M and A or like business partnerships, um, every single day is different. So, what are some of the projects, or one or two projects, that you've been worked on, working on that you found most interesting, um, that you're most excited about? Mm -hmm. um, so we found this pretty cool company at Alsop Louis called Niantic, um, which created mm -hmm. this thing called Pokemon Go, which some of you guys may have played. Um, so. Essentially, what was really cool about that was basically 
Uh, the founder and CEO, John Hankey, was someone who we had backed previously. Mm -hmm. um, so he founded this company called Keyhole that basically ended up getting acquired by Google and became the basis for Google Earth. And when he was at Google, he decided to create this small project called Niantic Labs within Google. And um, once he decided to spin that out, we ended up investing in that. And I think it's really taken off. There is a new game coming up, um, Harry Potter, and um, wow. some new titles coming up as well. So. We've got some excited fans already. <laughs> Probably future investors right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. And you also, I think Al Sapolui also invested in a pretty cool, small, small company now called Twitch, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so Twitch was also an investment. So, um, Twitch, we were the first investors in that company since um, Justin Khan founded this company called Justin TV, which we ended up backing early on. And then one of the spin offs of Justin TV was Twitch. So, we ended up being the first investors in that. And um, one of my partners sat on the board of Twitch and ended up seeing that ride out to exit, um, getting acquired by Amazon for a little less than a billion. A little less than a billion. All right. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad for a day's work. Now, you have a really busy schedule, obviously. Um, I would like to ask, what are some things that you actually do for fun? What do I do for fun? Um, Oh, okay. <laughs> Am I supposed to list these things? Okay. We can go through some of these. Well, um, I didn't expect anyone to be collecting my hobbies in a collage form. Anything um, in the public. But, um, so, um, obviously, I've been involved with the Asian American community in San Francisco, so um, have been a supporter of the Miss Asian Global Pageant, as well as a couple other initiatives um, within San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, skydiving is something I've done every now and then. Um, I guess going to the shooting range as well, the photography range. and um, cosplay. So. Cos now, tell us a bit about you. Are you're a judge with for Miss Asian Global, mm -hmm. which was amazing. What was that experience like? It was pretty terrifying, actually. So, um, for those of you who were at the pageant two years ago, I think Vince Ma was like very happy that no one tripped and fell during the pageant. So, um, <laughs> actually, the judges get about thirty seconds of spotlight each in which each of us are introduced. Um, so meanwhile, I'm sitting on my chair like so nervous because everyone's incredibly amazing, incredibly talented. You can't really like tell the difference between like one amazing woman delegate versus another. So my foot fell asleep during the pageant. Um, so when my name was called, um, I almost uh, tripped and fell. So. <laughs> you were very graceful, I remember this. So, so well done. Um, but it was, it was definitely a very difficult role to play. Yeah, thank you for being part of that. That was uh, that was a very very difficult night, um, but you were amazing. Thanks for helping us pick our queen that night. And now, how did you get started in shooting gun the gun range here? Um, yeah, so basically, um, started shooting a couple years ago. Um, so part of the partnership and the background. Also, believe partners is that a number of our partners do have a government background. So, for example, one of our partners was formerly deputy director of the NSA. Another partner founded Incutel, which is the CIA's venture capital fund, and we have a couple other partners from Incutel. So, as a side hobby, a number of them love going to the shooting range since mm. um, cybersecurity plus going to the shooting range are obviously tied. Mm. Um, maybe. <laughs> um, so, basically, started picking that up, and um, um, I guess at a very early age. At a very early age, you started shooting. Yes, a couple of decades ago. <laughs> <laughs> so note to any guys out there. <laughs> and now if this, you can uh, shoot better than me, then if you can shoot better, <laughs> then, then you got a shot. Ha. All right. Um, now what is this up here? This looks like you are directing airline traffic with a light. Airline state. traffic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, so where is this? this was Comic Con in San Diego a few years ago, um, where. I think you actually took that photo, that so yes. um, clearly you know what was going on there. Um, so I was dressed as uh, Power Rangers. King Power, Power Ranger. Ranger. So. Very cool. That was your first time at Comic Con? It was, yes. What was your, what was your um, what, how do you, ex I guess, describe that experience? Um, overwhelmed. I thought my costume was pretty cool until I saw everyone else's. <laughs> so. It was a cool costume. Very cool costume. Uh, and the lightsaber was very cool, too. And obviously, now, how often ha how, have you been doing photography for a long time, or is that? I have. Um, so I took my first photography class in college. Um, it was a black and white film photography class, going into the dark room, developing it. So now I just do digital, but um, yeah. Well, I can develop film too. Yes. Of course, why not? And is this a one-time thing for skydiving, or is this uh, something that you do on a regular basis? I've gone a couple of times. Really? So, yeah. How's that? What was that experience like? 
It's fun. I mean, it's adventurous. I've never done. Um, I gotta do this. Yeah, we can go next time. So. Um, all right, we'll do that next time. Okay. So now that's your fun. That's what you're doing. I don't even know how you squeeze all this in on top of your work schedule. You also do a lot of. You have a very strong personal mission as well too, of public service. Can you share with me a little bit about? where that came from, mm -hmm. and what do you mean, what is their definition of public service? Um, so, ever since I was young, I was always engaged in public service in some form. Um, <laughs> surprise? There's all these surprise images. Um, so, essentially, um, starting from elementary school, middle school to high school, um, was always volunteering at hospitals, volunteering at senior care centers, orphanages, when I was in high school, ended up starting a small nonprofit that was focused on bringing music and art um, to individuals at different care centers. And once I got to Stanford for undergrad, that was something I was very interested in doing. So over here, you actually see a professor at Stanford named Tom Ehrlich, who I worked very closely with and who is still a very dear friend and mentor, basically um, was very interested in looking at how do people engage in public service and how should people engage in public service, whether that's full-time career-wise or part-time, whether it's just a couple hours every weekend. So we ended up publishing a book on um, public service and also um, even going into venture capital, I really thought that I was signing up for um, a job which involved work with government and a number of people who previously worked in government and didn't know what VC was at all and right. was very surprised when it was drastically different from what I expected, but still a lot of fun. You mentioned VC, so just to make sure everyone's on the same page, how would you describe what a venture capitalist actually does. Some people have heard the term, but they may not be exactly sure what it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think that's a great question. Since when I first started out in venture capital, I thought it was just you have millions of dollars sitting in a bank account, and you just start distributing money to aspiring founders. Um, so basically, like the very first um, day that I started at my job, we had these partner meetings. So I walked into the partner meeting with a list of 20 companies that I thought we should give millions of dollars to. And every single one of them was shot down because wow. I quickly realized that venture capital also involves a due diligence process and just a little bit more thought beyond just your college buddy wanting to start a company and a VC just giving you money. So um, basically, at the end of the day, what a venture capitalist does is we basically give money um, to a startup in exchange for equity and control of some kind. Mm -hmm. um, so um, at the end of the day, like we're able to help grow the company and also um, win when the founder also succeeds. What do you love most about being a, a venture capitalist? Um, I think probably being able to uh, see a lot of new interesting technologies and work with incredible founders at the end of the day. So as a VC, like we don't necessarily have the brilliant idea that's going to create a billion dollar business, but at the end of the day, it's the founder who's really able to see that and take it to the next level and just being able to see what the next trend is is um, really interesting. So when you're looking at these companies as a venture capitalist, what are one or two things that are core and key um, that you look for in, in, your, in your recipe for success? Um, yeah, I would say generally um, probably like three things. Um, so one, who's the team behind the company? Um, just because at the end of the day, ideas are cheap. So any company, any founder, um, oftentimes will get pitched the exact same consumer idea, the exact same like enterprise idea. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really the team behind it who can execute on that. So who is the founder? Who's the founding team? That's absolutely critical. Um, two, in terms of what's the product and the technology and how is it unique and different in the market? So is there core IP around it? Um, is there something that's really defensible around that? Um, and then three, also just what's the market opportunity in terms of um, you could have some really fancy gadget for a very, very small market, but that's not really necessarily going to create a successful business as opposed to having some great technology for a large, multi-billion dollar market. That makes sense. All right. So you guys, all you guys have great ideas. Make sure those three things are in place before you go talk about it. <laughs> and um, you also, if I'm not mistaken, as I did in my due diligence, you also teach. I do, yes. So what do you te where do you teach, what do you teach? Um, so I guess, yeah, no one should listen to me since I'm not a great teacher, but, um, <laughs> but um, so I teach a few classes on entrepreneurship and venture capital at Stanford, um, so, yeah. Do you have some pictures of Is her? there another photo? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like expecting there to be another photo, so. We do have more too. <laughs> now, what's, what's going on here? 
Um, so over here is um, an entrepreneurship venture capital class that I've been teaching at Stanford for the past few years now, so it's gone on for a number of years, and basically we talk about what exactly are disruption and trends that happen in the venture industry, so new trends that include like new different funding models, whether that's crowdfunding with AngelList or um, things like, for example, new strategic investors, um, just disruptions, essentially disruptions in venture capital. So um, in this photo specifically, one of our partners at Alsop Louis, his name is Tom Kalinske, um, so brought him into the class. Tom Kalinske has an incredible background. He was formerly CEO of Mattel, um, also CEO of Sega of America, wow. so Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, Mattel yeah. obviously developed Barbie dolls and Hot Wheels, um, so brought him in to really provide some insight as a successful executive um, taking companies to the next level. So. Amazing, wow. And I also want to talk a little bit about, um, you have a very strong sense of philanthropy, right? Mm -hmm. What is your definition of philanthropy and how do you go about to practice it as part of your daily philosophy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, the way I think about philanthropy, um, I think that definition has also changed over time in terms of initially people think philanthropy is just someone who's able to give away lots of money. Um, or even if you think about public service, traditionally that's been I'm working in government or I'm in the military and very traditional forms of public service. And I think a lot of that's changed over time in terms of being able to volunteer, for example, like volunteer for um, your local community or, for instance, um, volunteer internationally or even just spend a few hours every weekend helping and supporting other individuals. I think that's important. That's good. Do you have, as we found out here, words of wisdom or advice to future entrepreneurs or people who are actually interested in going into the capital industry as potential VCs themselves or trying to learn what it's like to be an investor? What would be if you could do things, if you could do things differently or over again, would you do anything different? Mm -hmm. um, I think probably the most important thing is um, who you work with is incredibly important. So even when I started out in venture capital, I had absolutely no idea what VC was. I didn't know any of the venture capital funds and their names, but ended up at Al Sopoli because I really liked the individuals who were there and um, didn't talk to any other venture fund. And it was more just rather than an interest in joining a specific fund or joining a specific company or getting into venture capital, it's really about who at the end of the day you work with and really enjoy the team at Alsop Louis. So. Right. so basically environment and team. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Thank you so much, Ernestine, for coming. Yeah.